Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. Today I am super excited to start the video because today I am going to show you how you can approximate Fibonacci series using a single layer neural network. Well, if you are familiar with neural network and deep learning, then you might have heard of a theorem which is called Universal Approximation Theorem which says that a neural network having just one single layer can approximate any function, any continuous function given a finite number of neurons. So uh, what that theorem even means? Well, suppose you have a neural network with just one hidden layer and you have a function, a continuous function and no matter how complex it is, you can generate or at least approximate this function with your neural network given that you give the neural network enough amount of neurons in the hidden layer. Now, uh, one thing might occur in your head that if we can generate any function using just a neural network having just one hidden layer, then why we even need deeper neural networks? Well, the answer is really simple because just imagine, suppose uh, you have a really complex function with a bunch of features and uh, you just you are just going to approximate the output variable with just one hidden layer then uh, in theory it is true that you can actually approximate the function using just one layer and ha but the number of neurons you are going to have the number of neurons you are going to need will grow exponentially along with the complexity of your function so uh, instead if you just use a neural network having a lesser number of neurons per layer but having a larger number of networks that is if you create a deep neural network suppose having uh, three or four layers but the number of neurons is in each layer is relatively lesser than the first one where you are using only one hidden layer then it turns out that you can approximate the complex function with a lesser number of neurons but a deeper network so that is why you just don't use a network with the single layer but you use a network with many number of layers having lesser number of neurons per layer so that dramatically decreases the number of parameters to strain and hence increases the efficiency and the number of the, and the time taken to train the model in this video i'm going to give you a feel that the universal approximation theorem is indeed true. So uh, to demonstrate this theorem, I am just gonna use the Fibonacci function. Well, if you are not familiar with Fibonacci function, then please stop this video right now and research about it. It's super amazing. Okay, so uh, this is our Fibonacci series. It starts with one and the nth term in this sequence is the sum of the, its uh, previous two terms. So suppose this is the fifth term of the sequence and this is the sum of fourth term and third term okay so this is the sequence and uh, we have a nice formula to generate the sequence well uh, if you are familiar with competitive programming then they generate this sequence using uh, dynamic programming kind of stuff but uh, our goal is to approximate the Fibonacci function so we are gonna use the Fibonacci function to generate our data set okay so uh, to generate a Fibonacci number we need uh, this golden ratio okay uh, this the, the golden ratio is denoted as phi and the value is 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 now uh, to find the nth Fibonacci series using the golden ratio we just have to follow this formula well the formula is very simple uh, phi to the n minus minus phi to the minus n divided by root 5 now now this is the actual formula you can definitely use it but uh, for but here you can see that you have to use the power two times one for this term and another for this term and if you notice a bit clearly then you can see that this term is very close to zero and as our n is gonna increase this is gonna be lesser 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 and it will eventually be zero practically be zero so uh, we are not gonna uh consider this term instead we can just ignore this term and we can have an approximate formula for our fibonacci sequ sequence and uh, it's gonna make our computation a bit faster so the approximate formula is 
phi to the n, the n Fibonacci number is equal to the phi to the n divided by square root of 5 and we are taking the nearest integer. Okay. So uh, by using this formula, I'm going to generate the Fibonacci sequence and now comes our data portion. Now we have to generate data, right? Because a neural network uh, learns from data. It needs data to make the function, to approximate the function. So I am going to use here 4000 data points and uh, I'm going to use the first 500 numbers. I'm going to sample without replacement 400 numbers from 1 to 500 numbers. Okay. So uh, first I have defined a matrix here and this matrix contains two columns and 400 rows and uh, I am then generating 400 unique random numbers that is uh, I am sampling the numbers without replacement randomly and uh, from the number 1 to 500 okay and after that in the mat in the data matrix I am uh, placing the random numbers in the first column and in the second column I am placing the Fibonacci sequence corresponding the Fibonacci number corresponding to the number in the first column okay now we are going to get into the uh, splitting into train and test set well now uh, x is gonna be the vector of features now at this point x is just rank 1 array and it can cause dimensional problems in our python computation so we are gonna change it into a matrix with just one column that is uh, i'm gonna change the x into a column vector same i'm same i'm gonna do for the y and at this point i'm gonna have two column vectors x and y and after that i am just gonna uh, squash the y values because if you can if you just check the values of y by printing them you can see that they are gigantic and neural network can't learn from those gigantic numbers so we have to somehow squash it down and the squashing function i am using here is simple log function now here is a tip from my side is uh, in other cases please don't use the log function instead use a log x plus 1 function but here y cannot be zero that's why I am just using log x function, okay? And after that, I am just importing train test split module from the scikit-learn to uh, split our data set into training and testing. And uh, here, I am just using 20% of our total data as test set and the rest of the 80% will be in training set. So, uh, by doing this i have split it into training set and testing set now comes the interesting portion now we are going to build our simple neural network in keras well i have defined a function for it build model and i am gonna make the neural network using the sequential module uh, so here i have just uh, defined model is equal to sequential so that to tell the so that to tell the uh, program that okay I'm gonna make a sequential model and after that I'm going to add only one hidden layer with 1024 neurons now this is important if you just if you just gonna add a really a small number of neurons say 2 3 or even 10 it won't work because uh, it is true that you can approximate any function using just one layer but the number of neurons you're going to have is very large. That is the width of your network should be large enough so that it can approximate the function you want. So I have actually uh, tried a few, a few times and found that 1024 works really fine. And here the input dimension is 1 because obviously I'm just going to input in the input layer just one feature that is a number. And the activation I'm using is ReLU. Now, obviously, uh, there are other activation functions that you can try, but at this moment, ReLU is the best activation function. And for neural network, please use ReLU because it gives the best results. Unless you are going to use leaky ReLU, 
which may give a slightly better result but uh, I'm gonna leave you for you to try uh, so after that I'm gonna just define the last layer which will again contain only one neuron because it is a regression problem and we are just gonna get the answer from it and after that I am uh, compiling the model I am using here Adam optimizer and the loss I am minimizing here is mean squared error and the metrics that I'm gonna show while training each epoch is MAE which is the abbreviation of mean absolute error and after that I'm just gonna return the model and here uh, I have just built the model just by just calling the function and after that I'm gonna um, show a summary of our model now at this point I should really run this code from the beginning to show you that everything is working fine okay so let me just run it okay it is done this one is done generating our data it is also done splitting into train and test set done building our keras model and here the complete building and yes you can see that I have only one hidden layer containing 1024 neurons and the last layer containing only one neuron and the number of parameters is 3073 okay now comes the interesting part this is the model training part now here you can see that uh, I am using batch size of 32 and number of epochs is 400 well actually I have run the model previously and found that for after 400 epochs it really approximates the Fibonacci's function well so let's try it first epoch and I am using the Colab GPU so it's really fast I'm definitely gonna share the Colab notebook with you so please check the description down below and after oh my god just see the loss to see the mean absolute error it's so less and yes I have found this error okay now uh, let me just go back and check the initial error it, it has well it started with 69 and after 400 epochs I got an error 0.0021 so by looking at this you can say that okay our model is really good so let's just check it in the prediction portion well that is the output from a previous run so let me just omit it and okay so here's the moment I am gonna uh, ask the 10th Fibonacci number okay so let me just run it okay now see uh, the by the formula we got the 10th Fibonacci number is 55 which is absolutely correct and by our neural network we also get a number 55 point something which is really close right 55 and these two are really close so you can check how well the model has approximated the function now here you can say that I have also printed the log of nth Fibonacci number because uh, after, if I just change the n to 50 you can see the number is gigantic and even this at this number they are pretty close let me uh, try even a larger number uh, say 200 well here now you can see that it is infinity it is telling you infinity but it is actually not infinity it is just e raised to the power uh, it is just e raised to the power this number and it is really gigantic number that's why it's showing you as infinity but that's why I have printed the logarithm logarithm of this number so that you can compare the logarithm at least so you can check the by formula we get a logger log of this and by our neural network we also get a similar result so let me try a little bit lower numbers something like 150 and you can see that the number is gigantic and you can compare the logarithm again and it is very close 
so uh, that was all for this video so i have shown you how uh, to approximate fibonacci function using just uh, a neural network so i hope that you really enjoyed this video please like this video share this video and comment below and please don't forget to subscribe to normalize nerd thanks for watching